This is a walkthrough of the Blameless Incident Management Solution. Blameless has been designed to be fast, easy, and intuitive to use. In this video, I'll be using Slack and Slack commands. However, much of the same functionality that is available in Slack can be done with either the MS Teams application or by running MS Teams in a web browser. To get started, I'll run the forward slash blameless command. Note, in the MS Teams version, the same is accomplished with the at sign followed by the word blameless. Executing forward slash blameless brings up a modal where I can choose to start an incident, show the existing incidents, show who's on call from pager duty or ops genie, or get some further help with the blameless slack commands. Here I'll select start incident. Another dialog box opens. I'll need to select an incident type, which is a fully customizable template pre-configured with the options I need. I'll also specify the severity level and give this incident a brief description. Several things to note here. First, to the left, you may have noticed I started in the incidents channel. Some clients choose to dedicate an incidents channel, but with the blameless bot in place, regardless of the channel I'm in, I could execute the blameless slack command to start an incident. Also note that the bot created a slack channel specifically for this incident, and they can be public or private. Here, the channel is named incident 1599. You'll also note three other channels were notified that an incident had been created. Announcements, customer success, and the executive channel. With Blameless, you can easily notify other Slack channels or users. Switching to the new incident channel and scrolling back to the top, we see an overview of our current incident. The description, incident type, severity, status, incident commander, which, by the way, is currently me because I created the incident type to designate the creator of the incident as commander. Again, fully customizable. A reminder that this is a dedicated Slack channel, Incident 1599, and the bot has automatically created a JIRA ticket for us, labeled BD1770. And finally, a dedicated link in Zoom, in case everyone wants to jump on a Zoom. Google Meet and GoToMeeting are also supported. Scrolling back down, since we just created the incident, we're in the investigating state. And because of this, tasks have been assigned for the commander. Out of the box, Blameless provides a default set of tasks, but tasks for all status levels are fully customizable inside of the incident type templates. You may have existing processes in place in your playbooks or runbooks. These can easily be placed into Blameless to match your current processes. My first task was automatically checked off because, again, I set the creator of the incident to be designated as the commander. Therefore, my next task is to appoint a communications lead role. Notice the little red asterisk. This means that the task is a mandatory task. It needs to be done if we want to move the status forward. I could assign this role with the drop-down box in Slack. However, I'll use this opportunity to introduce another Slack command. This time, I'll use the forward slash blameless assign command. And since it's an example, I'll just assign myself. Eighty-five to ninety percent of incident management can be done using Slack commands with Blameless. And while we're on the subject, here's a partial list of some of the more popular Blameless Slack commands. Blameless Assign assigns a user to a specific role. Blameless On Call shows the On Call Engineer from PagerDuty or Ops Genie. Blameless Status shows current incident status or allows the user to change status. Blameless severity shows the current incident severity or change severity. Blameless resolve resolves the current incident. 
Blameless Tags allows a user to view or modify the current incident tags. Blameless Hashtag To Do creates a new follow-up action in Jira. Blameless Add Swim Lane creates a new swim lane for an incident. Back to our incident. Since I've also appointed myself the communication lead, I'm also assigned tasks for that role. I'll go ahead and start checking off these tasks, just like a team would do for a regular incident. By the way, in parts one and two, you will hear me refer to the timeline. The timeline is a summarized view of when events actually occurred in the incident. You'll see the timeline in part two of this video. The team can also add comments via Slack. To add the comment to the timeline in the Blameless UI, a user can tag the comment with one of seven emojis. The Blameless bot responds with a green box with a white check mark, indicating that the comment has been added to the timeline. The user can also add screenshots or files, which are automatically added to the timeline. And speaking of screenshots, here are those seven emojis I mentioned to add a comment to the timeline. I'd like to show you how to create a follow-up action item in Jira so that you can see the effect in the Blameless UI. A minute ago, I showed you a list of the Blameless Slack commands. I'm using the hashtag to-do command to add a follow-up action item in Jira. We'll see the results in part two of this video. Note the response from Jira, indicating a child ticket of the original Jira ticket has been created. Finally, since we've checked off all of our current tasks, I'll go ahead and move the status forward with the blameless status command. Since we've moved the status to the identified state, more tasks are assigned. In part two of this demo walkthrough, we'll continue by switching to the Blameless UI and finalizing this incident by preparing and publishing its retrospective. See you there.